Uh, good morning, Ballpark Cam up and running at Truist Park. We are coming your way live from Cobb County, Georgia, ahead of the historic Rickwood field game from Birmingham, Alabama. The Braves hosting the Tigers, and the Tigers skipper kind enough to take some time with us this morning on MLB Central. AJ Hinge, love to have you with us. Yes, thank you. I'm glad I'm glad I'm here. I'm kind of missing Dero. He yes. can't make it. I don't know about that London trip, but I heard a little under the weather. A little under the weather after the London trip. You can make your own assumptions. <laughs> I told him to put onions in his socks. You know how I feel about this. This is a remedy, an at-home remedy, but he's not buying truth. what I'm selling. What is the truth behind why Dero is not here? I want to know the truth. Dero, you feel good? Are you there? Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, we can hear you. All right. We're going to get let your Listen. mic get set. All right, I could have I could have showed up today, but that would have been selfish. I wanted to give it one more day. The Tigers and Braves do not want to be shaking my hand five minutes after I was laying in bed for three days. Yeah, I got 10-10 tea time with Brian McCann in North <laughs> North. No, Atlanta. no. That's what I got. <laughs> Spot on. Oh, Skip, it, it has been an emotional 20 hours for the baseball world. Yeah. One of the greatest to ever do it. Willie Mays passing away at the age of 93. What are your memories of him? You know, I had a chance to meet him going through San Francisco, and it's like meeting royalty. I mean, it's incredible how that, that feeling of nerves when you meet a legend um, like Willie Mays. And so he was so good to, to so many people. He made you feel like, you were the most important conversation he's ever had. Um, and I think the more I, you know, the older I get, the more I'm around the game, the more you look around the numbers that get retired, the Hall of Fame inductions, like part of my era that I played against is starting to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. And that, um, it just brings back a lot of, a lot of thoughts on greatness. And he, he exuded greatness. Hey, and he exuded joy, didn't he? he Dero did. and I were talking about how he made so many people fall in love with this great game. You've been in this game your entire life. I know your father's impact on your love for it. What are your earliest, yeah. AJ, what are your earliest memories of baseball and how you grew to love it? Yeah, so it, um, first off, I, it, a lot, I, ironically, here sitting in Atlanta, um, I grew up watching TBS, like WTBS at the night. Braves. Did Dale Murphy and Bob Horner and Claudel Washington, and and then I remember getting to to play, um, you know, in, in the backyard trying to pretend like I was Dale Murphy. Who were you, you Dale I Murphy? wanted to be Dale Murphy. Okay. Like I tried the little waggle, it didn't work. I tried everything <laughs> I could, but I I think that that kid in us that wants to be on this stage and play on these fields never goes away, and the appreciation grows and grows as you get older. Um, but those first days in the backyard playing wiffle ball mm -hmm. and trying to trying to emulate your your favorite players, um, it gets all of us. D. Ray, you were Don Mattingly, yes. I had the Hitman poster. He's in the tuxedo pinstripe over my bed my entire life, right? AJ, I want to. I want. You've been through so much from Houston all the way to Detroit. Now I kind of was sitting up last night wondering what I could ask you. I think the biggest question that I want to know is, is how have you grown as kind of an in-game manager? What have you learned mm -hmm. doing this for as long as you have? That, that kind of is second nature when you first started, you struggled with. Yeah. So I, I, think, I think as a young manager, you always try to do the right thing. And what is the right thing defined by it? Um, what everybody thinks or what the questions you're going to have to answer or the explanation to your players. And as a, as a manager, you get caught up a little bit um, trying to do the right thing. Um, and in actuality, the right thing is a combination of your instincts and then also your intellect of what you do. And so, you know, as you as you get, you know, more and more mature in this job, you start to balance those two things and you start to, you know, trust the numbers, you trust your instincts, you trust the combination of those two things. Um, you know when to kind of go to players and explain it to them and when it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, when guys come out of the game or, or you pinch hit or things like that. So you get caught up in the external things as a younger manager. You start feeling a lot more comfortable in your skin, making tough decisions as you get, you know, more and more used to them. You've been through really good stretches and really bad stretches in this game. What stands out about the past couple weeks to you? You know, we've had some tough losses. You know, the difference in the margin of winning and losing at this level is so small. Like, it is, it might be one play, it might be one pitch, it might be one um, one lineup of a cutoff man. Like, there's so many things that there's, there's one little thing a day. 
And those are two to one losses last night. Those are two to one losses two nights ago. It's a one run loss last week. And and so when you you know, I get asked all the time about records and falling below 500 and where we factor in, in the AL Central. You love those questions, don't you? Yeah, I love them. I mean, it, yeah, I hate them. But I but I know what separates, you know, the top of a division and 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 the bottom of the division, it's narrow. And so when you lose a couple of tough games, it's easy to ride that emotional roller coaster south. Um, it's not as easy when you're making that climb. When you do good things, you kind of you kind of push them to the side. Um, you got to stay balanced through it all because the 162 you're going to play, they're going to tally up the wins. We need to we need to find a way to flip the script a little bit on these one run losses. I mean, I look at it like you're managing the game, but I think people need to realize how much you're managing personalities. Take me inside, like the juxtapose of a Riley Green who was the fifth overall pick who has got an OPS north of 800 dealing with him and kind of teaching him the ropes and then having to deal with sending Spencer Torkelson who went one overall down to the minors. I mean it's such a such a tough kind of tightrope to walk for you. Yeah you know Dero one one of the things we try to talk about is like staying underneath the whole umbrella of uh, like your concept like what do you believe in as a manager what do you believe in as an organization what are you trying to do as a team and then the reality is as a manager you are you are managing 26 different people in different stages of their careers their lives their they're standing on the team and things like that so riley green you know is is it, it's pretty simple with him like continuing to remind him of the things he does well continuing to remind him of why he does things well um, and things work out you know get a good pitch to hit is something I've said to him since the first day in the big leagues uh, when he does you see a, a laser show like not to steal it from Pedroia but that's what it is and, and I, I think there's 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 a lot to like about Riley's overall growth in the last couple of years and he's just beginning torque on the other hand when you're delivering bad news like I've just learned like be direct be very, very honest, be open, be transparent, be vulnerable. It is the worst. I had so many times I got sent down that all I wanted to be told was the truth. And then I can recover yeah. and get myself back up, getting back in the batter's box. So Torque will be back. He's a big part of our present and our future. There are some changes that he needs to make. Um, and the best place for him to do that is in Toledo. But man, it's um, it's not fun when you when you have you know, those messages to deliver. Tarek Scoobles fun. When did you fun. know he was going to be this? Because if you look at his ERA skip from year to year, it yeah. is improving vastly. So it's improving because of his command. You know, I mean, listen, there's a lot of things that can pull you out of two two to one losses in Atlanta. Tarek Skubal is one of them. Yes. So I think his his general feel for his delivery, his stuff, the way he competes is incredible. I love the fact that he he has no fear whatsoever. Uh, there's no ego, but there's intimidation, and, and there's there's a lot to like about how he approaches his start days. Um, I think the last couple of years has evolved. Him bouncing back from injury is single-handedly one of the coolest stories because like nothing's been given to him, and you look at the numbers that they don't they don't lie. They're facts. What do we have for breakfast? Getting ready for a day game. So first off, I had to rush here to get breakfast because of this 915 <laughs> appointment that I had. I'm it's walking a across the field. Appointment. Lauren's yelling at me to hurry because well, he like, was I wasn't his there sweet yet. Time. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to Zach Shore, former player of mine. And um, so I scarfed down some eggs, some bacon, very traditional, very, very American breakfasts. Um, I gotta go in and finish it since I came out so early. AJ, I played first base, so if you need me. Mark Canna who, you know what I mean? I got pop. I mean, Canna hits in the <laughs> middle of our order, so you got to do more than just play first base. AJ Hinge, thank you so much. You got it.